Welcome to shooting the shit. <laughs> Another month has gone by. Believe it or not. And probably the last two weeks have been a little wild. We've mm -hmm. had company and of course I had to go to the hospital for what, three or four days? Almost five. Almost five. But uh, we'll, talk in the, we'll start talking about uh, my daughter Megan came in from town. Mm -hmm. come, come in from town. Come in from Florida. <clears throat> That was fun. Oh, they blew a tire out on the way down. So yeah. Let's start with that. I think they were leaving on a Tuesday. They didn't make it here to Thursday. Mm -hmm. They didn't stay with us the whole time, or they did get to stay with us, period, because, you know, I got a movie room, no damn bed. I, I need to get a blow up mattress or something. But it, normally they go to uh, their other grandma's and they stay there. Uh, Sarah came with her, her girlfriend, and. Um, they, uh, it was like two or three days where we got to see them. Mm -hmm. The first day we saw them, what did we do the first day? We saw we went them out to dinner. Different. We went out and yeah, saw we them just, on a Saturday. Yeah, we just went out, uh, went out to dinner and then they hung out here and, mm -hmm. and talked. We watched the movie. Watched the movie. Mm -hmm. Did we watch the movie here? Yes, we did. What did we watch? Um, can't remember. The anime thing. The anime thing. You get something you bought in the mail that you got for, off of Amazon. <laughs> Where the guy had didn't have the speaking part. They were, oh, what's that called? Willie's Wonderland. Yeah, yeah. That. Well, I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not anime. It's Whatever. Animatronics. <laughs> animatronics. Uh, but anyway, we got to hang out in the end. A few days later, they came back. We went to a flea market in Tazewell. Mm -hmm. That was Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Always get them. Yeah. And then the last day they were here, we got to. Uh, go to Beckley, went to a few places down there, and went to a movie, and, uh... Saw The Conjuring. Saw The Conjuring 3, and then we went to eat at a Golden Corral, which we haven't had the Golden Corral open in quite a while. Well, we had Aaron with us, too. Yeah, and Aaron got to go with us, Ace. Mm -hmm. That day he went with us. Uh, he didn't get to go to the flea market, did mm -hmm. he? Or he went to the flea market, too. This is the first day that he didn't get to, right. to come with them or whatever. But uh, yeah, we had fun seeing them, and uh, it was great to see my daughter, and I hated to see her go. Um, the night we went to the movies, I remember that. Remember it near the end when I asked you if you was getting cold, yeah. and you were like, no, and I kind of had a little shiver. And that Started getting sick. Yeah, so the time we get home, we didn't have the air on all day, and it was pretty hot in here. So she turned the air and stuff on, <laughs> And uh, I just couldn't cool down, could I? Mm -hmm. it was a few hours later, and I just I just thought it was just hot in here. It turned out I had a fever, and was getting sick. So really sick. Yeah. So the next day turned out to be uh, you know off and on. It seemed like fever was go, and then I'd have the chills, and I was like, well, you know, I'll just wait. My doctor is closed on the weekends. Mm -hmm. So I think I just go to my doctor. I don't want to go to the ER and sit forever and all that good stuff. Tried to get him to go Sunday. Yeah. Somebody was stubborn. Uh, so about three o'clock in the morning, I'm <laughs> really getting sick, and uh, I'm up half the night, and I go to pee, and I had blood in my urine. That wasn't nice. So, so you had to come wake me I up. I wake her up, <laughs> and like, um, you think I should just go ahead and go to the doctor now? And, or go to the ER, and she said, well, let's wait, and you can wait probably in the morning, and so I waited, and uh, by that next morning, time we did get ready to go, we was still going to go to my doctor, and... Um, Changed my mind and just said no, but no, go to the ER. No, because I was pouring a sweat. sweat. I could barely stand up, mm -hmm. but I didn't have no pain or anything nowhere, so I didn't know what the hell was going on. I just thought I had, like... It felt like the flu and kind of, but I'm thinking, you know, that just the fever kept coming and going. Uh, but I was peeing a little bit of blood and um, what else? Uh, like every 10 or 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. You're killing me with that crunch. <laughs> uh, every, I, I, I mean, every 10 or 15 minutes, I had to literally almost run to the bathroom. And it feels like I hadn't peed in two or three hours, and it's just like you're holding it for 30 minutes. It burned, but hardly nothing would come out. 
I was trying to drink grapefruit juice. No. Or not grapefruit, shit. Cranberry. So, you know, that morning, Sunday morning, really, before that, we did go to Walmart and get a few things, and I started feeling really weak and stuff before that. But then this is coming in the Monday morning, and um, I have to um, I keep drinking a little bit of that, but I just can't hardly drink. I can't eat. So we go to the ER. And it was a long process from there. Because he was very cranky with the nurses in the ER. I will tell you that. I had to apologize to one nurse. Well, I told her I was sorry, too. <laughs> because you know when you go to the doctor or ER or something like that and you see, uh, you go up to check in in the, in the missions or whatever. They ask you what's wrong with you. Okay. They're typing something on the freaking computer, right? Mm -hmm. You think they're putting this stuff in. <laughs> you go over to the triage. What's wrong with you? You have to tell them. And they're doing some stuff and they're checking you out. Go back to the nurse. What's wrong with you? I'm like, my God, did y'all, y'all don't communicate and read damn papers and stuff that the people give you from up front? She just starts laughing because I'm pouring a sweat. And I just He's don't agitated. feel like it. I'm He's like, rude just, to this nurse. I'm just like, give me a shot or something. Get rid of this damn fever. I feel like shit. The nurse was like, that's fine. You don't have to tell me. The doctor's going to come here and ask you. And I'm like, I know. The damn doctor. He's <laughs> a doctor a few minutes later come in and ask you. And she's kind of laughing over there. Crazy. Uh, so you want to explain what it really was? Because I can't, still can't figure out some of it. And uh, I don't know how it happened to me. So he had a kidney infection. Mm -hmm. um, but... Surprisingly, he had no pain. Even the doctors couldn't believe he had no pain because normally you would be doubled over from the pain in the kidneys from the infection. Mm -hmm. But the infection must have been there for a little bit before he really started running a fever. And if he would have had pain before the fever, he probably would have known a little bit beforehand. So that means the bacteria was in there and backing up. So the bacteria then went into his bloodstream, which caused him to go with sepsis. So that started it. Well, then when your mm. kidneys back up all of that stuff, it causes E. coli in your bloodstream. There are different types of E. coli. This is not the mm. kind from like eating I, when the doctor uncooked said, meat or his, something. Yeah, the doctor said E. coli, and I'm thinking, don't they think that what you, you know, something like something you get when you eat like chicken and stuff that's raw or there something? There are different strains. So, uh. but the kidney <laughs> flushing, all not being able to flush like normally backed everything up so it created the E. coli strand in his bloodstream as well which is why he ended up being in the hospital longer than he probably normally would have with just a kidney infection where they could have given him an antibiotic and then sent him home yeah they was giving the antibiotic, uh, antibiotic but they was putting it in the IV I had to get my IV way up here as you can see uh, they, they tried in the hand it didn't work and they tried right here and uh, you see all the bruises it did work for a little while, and then it went away. And then that's where I got all my blood stuff taken from, and then a little bit over here. Not much over here, but uh, yeah, way up here. First IV I've ever had or ever can remember having. Maybe I had one when I was a baby for something. But He was not a very good patient the first two days he was yeah. in there because he wasn't feeling good. Yeah. Um, we wasn't even there probably 30 minutes, and the doctor finally just came in and just said, "You're gonna, we're going to have to keep you. And I'm thinking... Am he ain't even hardly give me any medicine or anything. He's just like, yep, we got to have to keep you. I'm like, damn, because I got to stay. Because they had already tested your blood and stuff yeah. on you. That's why. Yeah. Well, I couldn't drive over, so she had to drive, and she had to take the day off, too. Um, then later on, Aaron came over in mm -hmm. the ER. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so then we got him up in a room. And then when you you had two visitors mm -hmm. downstairs, but when you go upstairs okay, for one COVID visitor per day, one visitor per day for so many hours a day. It, yeah, well, it was like it the was visiting 11. times are eleven to five thirty, but only one you can only be there for so long. Well, Does I that bet, mean that you can stay from eleven to five thirty? Uh, maybe that's why the guy next to me, his wife, one day she came at like twelve, and one day she didn't come to almost two something when right. I was leaving. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, I put me in a private room. I was like, hell yeah, I'm pimping. You know, I'm going to be in a private room. And I felt good when we got to the floor. I really did. And he was still a little cranky, mind you all. Yeah, I mean, I was starting to, I wasn't sweating. I didn't have a fever. I felt good. At least the fever was gone. I wasn't shaking. I thought I was all right. And I'm like, yeah, one day of this, this will be all right. You know, it'll be over with. No, it wasn't like that. She's getting ready to leave later on. 
about two something, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Soon as she left, that. yeah, as soon as she left, I started having the shakes again. And I'm like, my God, I'm having a fever. And my heart rate was like 150 most of the time. Had some issues with that, but. So then they hooked me up to a bunch of stuff and have to hold this damn box thing that took to a you know, heart monitor and I got to carry it around everywhere I go. So that sucked. Yeah, I had a bunch of them on there. And so the next day when he finds out he has to stay again for the second night, mm -hmm. he's texting me going, you need to call the nurse's station because they said they want to keep me here again. Yeah. You need to find out what's going on. Yeah. So then they was just telling me, you know, they got to do this, keep doing blood tests mm -hmm. and keep giving, they can only do the antibiotics once a day. And it's a little bitty thing. I, I'll be, it only takes 30 minutes to put in you, but it's so strong. You got to do it once every day right. or whatever. But they had to do <clears throat> blood cultures, which each blood culture you do, it takes 48 hours for the blood culture to come back. Yeah. That tells you how much the bacteria is growing or if it's decreasing and then what kind of bacteria in there. So they couldn't release them until he finally got a blood culture back that showed no more growth with the bacteria or the E. coli and that it was decreasing. So that's why you were in there for so long. was not able to come home until Thursday. Yeah. And like I said, that was, I had to be dehydrated. They was giving me stuff to flush through my body quite a bit of it the first two days. And when I got there, when I got upstairs, I was hungry and I told them I wanted some food and they had to keep doing all this stuff. Because I hadn't ate since the day before because I couldn't eat that morning or the night of. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the time they brought the food around, I done had the fever again. I couldn't eat two or three bites. And the next day, it just kept coming back every four or five hours for like the first two days. I was getting really agitated. I was thinking, you know, this don't make no sense. This keeps coming back. And the only thing they're going to do is bring me some Tylenol. But the Tylenol did work. It worked really quick. They must have some strong-ass Tylenol. Because it did work. Why? Wow. You're just cute. Just saying. Um, <laughs> by the third day, I'm pretty good. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I get up and walk around. I'm still a little weak because you're laying in the bed all most of the time. But uh, they had to give shots in my belly. I, I got bruises and stuff all over my belly. Because um, I didn't know just laying in the bed for like 24 hours can could give you blood clots. Mm -hmm. So they was giving me blood thinners. Yep. So, um but anyway, by the, he said that was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is when I got to actually come home. And he was agitated because he couldn't come home Wednesday. Yeah, I was, I was like, man, I, you know, when you got all that stuff hooked up to you, you can only do bird baths. And man, I tell you, my balls are sweating. I was wondering, <laughs> you can't really wash and do good when you got all this stuff hooked to you. You can't get in the shower. You can't wash right. It was terrible. And I was like, you know, my hair was growing. It was really bad back through here. My face, I needed to shave. I was itching. I was like. He was miserable. <laughs> yeah. So finally got to come home Thursday on the fourth day. And uh, still got to take antibiotics for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then go back and do some more blood work. Which they said is gone. But just in case it comes back or oh, whatever. Should I don't we know. talk about your experience in there? Do you not want to? Oh, yeah. So I'm down in, well, we go back to the ER part. I forgot okay. about that. Yeah. yeah, so she goes home to get my phone. I didn't even bring my phone. I was feeling bad. I just didn't even grab my phone or nothing. And she's going to get, you know. Get your you phone know. and stuff. I had to do a shot, an yeah. insulin shot. Aaron was on his way up, so. So Aaron shows up and hanging out there. And then the doc comes in and says they got to do some kind of prostate test thing. And then he's like, who are you? And my, Aaron says, oh, I'm the son. And they shake hands. And he's like, you don't want to be in here for this. Then. And he was like, Aaron's like, nah. And he just walks on out the door. And then he shuts the door. And the doc says, pull your pants and pull your shorts down and roll over on your side. I'm like, this is, I'm like, man, I just got over the fever. And I'm thinking, really? This guy's got to put his finger up my ass now. <laughs> And what was he testing for again? Just testing the prostate or yes. whatever. See if it was, you know, swollen or enlarged. Yeah. I kept telling him this was coming, yeah, this was coming. Puts it in there, buddy. I thought he put two fingers in there. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, he put them in there and then he pushed down and he's like, you feel any, you know, anything hurt or anything? I was like, nope, nope. And I'm like, just, just like, get the hell out of there, buddy. I just get it out of there. I don't want to, don't want to do this. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that was an He ER. was thankful I wasn't there because I had lost and they, it. Yeah, and they said everything was good with that, so that's good. I got uh, that done and out of the way. 
but that doesn't mean that you still don't have male issues because they said it's not typical for a man your age to all of a sudden have kidney infections. That doesn't happen. He's mm -hmm. never had a history of them before. So he says if he gets one or two more, he has to go see a urologist because it could be a male issue. Oh. <laughs> so he still doesn't want to. Sucks getting old, people. <laughs> yes, it does. I got like 30 pills I'll take every day now, it seems like, between vitamins and uh, what else? Now, blood pressure I got to take, uh, and then you're giving me an allergy pill. Tylenol. Tylenol every morning. Uh, now I'm taking the Pepsi pill because of stomach. <laughs> well, I'm taking antibiotics in case my stomach it bothers me or whatever. By the time I go to bed, I'm taking a pill to help me sleep good at night. <laughs> yep. I'm going to have to just get one of the little things for the weekly things, I believe. I, I believe you we're going to have to do but that. But I, I got to go back and do that blood test today before I was supposed to go back to my other doctor about the blood pressure and all that stuff from the MJ Journal things and stuff. And then that's the weekend also that we get our second flu shot. Well. Yes. COVID shot. Or COVID, yeah. Yeah, we got to get the COVID shot that weekend, too. So, And people say that you get sick from the COVID second shot. Some people do. I'm hoping I don't get sick again. Damn, I don't want to. <laughs> I missed a whole week of work. And, you know, it's, it's not good. But it, we'll get back, hopefully, to normal here soon, I hope, from all this stuff. I'm just, I've been to the doctor so damn much lately, more than I have my whole entire life. It sucks. But that's basically it. I mean, for the last few weeks you know my daughter came in and stuff and uh, we hung out with them and then I got sick and she felt bad because they was already on their way back and she, she wanted to stay here and stuff and I said it's all right I got everybody else and but uh, the first day or two that I was there and I had them sweats and I was shivering like I was a uh, old movie John thought he was a goner a few times I'm thinking this he might did. this might be it I, I might be going on out of here because this this ain't right and especially with the blood pressure. I mean, not well, blood pressure really wasn't pressure that high rate. as the heart rate. And the heart rate went up when I had the fever. And that's what, you know, they told me downstairs. So then they get upstairs and then I try to explain to them and they're worried about it. I'm like, just give me some Tylenol to go down. And it did. It went from 150 down to like 92, you know, after my fever went away. And they was mysteriously just couldn't figure that out either why it was so high. But it was when I had the fever, so... Hmm. Anything else you'd like to talk about? Most of it was, and I'm not down with the sickness on this. It really, that was probably the, the shivering really kind of mm -hmm. freaked me out, you know, because I was in the bed that one morning shivering and you was trying to cover me up, and it just don't help. When you're shivering and you got a fever, you really shouldn't cover yourself up. But what I did is to cover up three or four blankets, I started shedding a blanket every few minutes. The time I got down to the sheet, and then pulled it off. I basically was over the shivering, but then my whole face and head and everything else is hot because then you got the fever. I think the highest it got was like 100.5. Now it don't sound like it's that high. But for an adult it is. I guess for an adult it is. Uh, so I felt like I was 160, really. I mean, it felt really freaking hot. And uh, I just, it was terrible. So Terrible. 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 <laughs> So, but yeah, that's what's been going on in the movie John household here. And Rousey's just been there and supported me and helped me out. Even though she couldn't come for three days in a row when I was at the hospital, kind of ticked off because she was working and not getting off to 5.30 when visiting hours is over 5.30. And I didn't want her missing work too after I'm missing work, so... But we FaceTimed. But we did. You did some FaceTiming and stuff <laughs> and talking on the phone and texting and everything else. And uh, finally, my appetite got back to normal on Wednesday and Thursday. And mm -hmm. and uh, it's still, you know, I got home and took a shower that day and was shaving and stuff. It was, um, I got a little weak in the shower, actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, like I said, you lay around all that time and then you get up to walk a little bit. I, I did, the last few days, I did get up and walk around the unit a few times. But when you're not getting up, period. That's only early. because he was hunting the doctor down to try to get him to go home. No, I was walking that one day for sure. But uh, yeah, that makes you feel like you got some jello legs going on and you feel like you're 80 or 90 years old. And I was like, man, I got to get over this. So, but anyway, that's it for this shooting this shit. Mm -hmm. Mostly talking about that stuff. But big thing happened there. And 
didn't get to do no videos or anything that week. And But thanks to everybody that was on my Facebook that did comment and did... Um, do some praying. Did some praying and, and telling me and messaging me here and there and texting me and people that has my number and uh, hoping I get well soon and checking up on me and stuff. That was great. Mm -hmm. And um, that's it. That's it. Till next time. <laughs>